coming to you directly from the Center for Social Innovation in New York on the west side in the Starrett Lehigh Building. How are you? It's so awesome to see you. Great to see you too. Yeah. Always great to be on the show. Always to be talking about social innovation. This is a show, this is media to create positive social change and that's what we do here. We talk to people who are creating positive social change and we use this platform to advance uh, and inspire social change from everybody watching and everybody comes on the show. Today we have something awesome for you, but I won't tell you about that yet. Let me tell you about my co-host, Shane Snipes, okay? I know he's kind of cute and everything like that, so, um, you know, but I don't know. I always tease him about his clothes choices. What can I say? We'll get to that later. But Shane they're is also great. actually what else really... What could you say? But they're amazing. Oh, yeah, That's come on. No fashion sense. There. Shane is actually... He's uh, the co-creator of Eco Road Trip, which was a really popular uh, sustainability series that went across the United States through 48 states. Yeah, 1,000 interviews. I mean, I I don't know. I'd get tired of talking. Even I would get tired of talking. Did you get tired of talking? <laughs> yeah, absolutely not. And I can't imagine you ever getting tired of talking. No. Well, it was so much fun. And this is my co-host, <laughs> Monica Mitchell. She is a powerhouse in the social enterprise space. She actually started Good Business New York, which is good B, good-b.com. You guys can see it right there on the screen. Named Washington Post Standout Company of the Year. And of course, she's a thought leader because she's been stepping into the space talking to people who've been making change and transforming lives. Yeah, well, that's true. That's all true. I mean, but you forgot about the TNA, but never mind. <laughs> Listen, um, I was talking to Shane today, earlier today, when we were going over the show, and he was telling me that he um, uh, was teaching a class on Excel for J.P. Morgan trainees, which is like, this guy is like some sort of computer technology wizard, and he created this whole format, which I have to say is really innovative. Um, it's iPads. It's like being in a spaceship. There are laptops. And when our guests come on, um, it's cool. It's never been done before, yeah. even though it's really, you know, you're using really um, basic stuff like laptops and iPads. But the way and surfaces and the way you're using it is like so innovative. So he also said that uh, when I mentioned when he mentioned Excel, he said, oh, "Yeah, that's right. I actually helped launch that." So like that's yeah. who this guy is. Yeah. Well, you know, they need so many people to get the word out. Yeah, that's not it. All right. Anyway, we have a very cool show for you today. We have so many really interesting uh, financial um, innovation uh, and education And innovators. don't forget, guys, you can always tweet us, Facebook us. Uh, so be sure you stop by That Matters Live. Live. And we are and almost number Shane one. And at Snipes. And at, are we? Yeah. At, you know, this is the number one well, almost the number one show on the web. I just want you to know that. I mean, we are like climbing up in the polls. We're like right up there with O'Reilly factors. <laughs> Absolutely. Absolutely. <laughs> Except for he's not just online. We're yeah. only online. And so imagine that being so huge and we're only on online. the whole web. I mean, we're 1.9999, almost number one, right? You did that. He That's did right. this because. Being that technical wizard that he is, he actually did a very official, very scientific survey, right? Didn't you? No. He interviewed at least three people. It was totally official. We got it down. We use the same survey techniques that Fox News does. Yes. Fox yes. News. And the, the, the other Fox News. <laughs> the other Fox News, yes. <laughs> Today, we have like an awesome show. Uh, it is about um, innovations uh, for education. We're going to specifically hone in on uh, financial literacy and at-risk youth uh, mm -hmm. education, and we're going to talk about what at-risk means. Uh, we have uh, and how do you impact kids too? You know, we're going to talk about what it is to have an impact with a certain type of youth, uh, and we'll have a discussion around this idea of at-risk youth. We have so many. We we have um, really bright people. I'm very excited about today's show because I happen to be interested in the subject of financial innovation and education and the first guest that we have and we're going to meet her in a little while but I just want to mention her name uh, she's the founder of FinBot Mobile so you can at FinBot Mobile her at you know on Twitter and her name is Carol Chirinos and if I if I pronounce that wrong she'll correct me when she comes out but she's actually uh, an economist uh, and we will talk to her soon and then we yes. have Dax Devlon Ross mm -hmm. okay not only is he really hot, okay, that's all I'm saying, I'm just saying he's hot, but he is really brilliant. I, I'm starting to feel like, you know, she says everybody's hot, so I'm not feeling like I'm not hot, hot anymore no, because I everyone's did, talking about being hot okay. and I'm not hot. 
Shane, so I, really I did don't not know say you were hot, anymore. okay? I'll let people she, figure yeah, it out so. by themselves. <laughs> I don't know if you're hot, okay? Um, but <laughs> I do know that Devlon, uh, Dax Devlon, I mean, I don't know which name to call him. He got me flustered now. <laughs> he's, really, <laughs> he's like brilliant, smart, innovative, and yes, he's hot. Okay, that's all I have to say. But what he, <laughs> he's got this program for, um, for kids, uh, for middle schoolers, and we'll talk about it. It is... Um, Find it, you know, it's like All Star CEO Boot Camp, and they create App School. It has an App School, like they create App School. Yeah, they, ha they have a great perspective on how After School programs should work, and we'll talk right. to them about what that looks like. Yeah, that's I'm really excited about that. Uh, also, we have um, Zach Grauman, who I've just suit recently up. met. Suit up, and he is here in a that's suit, right. Mister Suit Up. And yeah, Mister Suit Up is suited up. Is suited up for our show. He has a really innovative program. And we'll oh, talk about and some that of too. our people, uh, some of the folks who are helping us at RPAs over there, they're like waving themselves, fanning themselves at the hotness that yeah. uh, some of our guests yeah, have today. Yeah, they're so hot. Yeah. Well, so, actually, we'll I thought they were doing it because of me. I thought, you know, I was the hot one, but he thinks he's the hot one. I don't know. I don't know. Um, and New York Minute. Yeah, the New York Minute, because we're in New York. This is the greatest city in the world. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we do that just so we know that we have a segment change. Come on, kids. Um, yay! Anyway, uh, New York is the greatest city in, on the planet. Okay, it's the greatest city in the world. Uh, we have argued about Buford, South this. Carolina is the greatest yeah, city on the planet. Yeah, because he says Buford, South Carolina, Seattle. I mean, wherever. Raleigh, Durham. Anywhere, Boston, except It's true, for though, but in this case, I think Brooklyn in New York City is amazing. Yeah. You guys can see uh, behind us here, we have this very, very cool um, pop-up pool that I was checking out there it's in the Brooklyn pool? Bridge oh my gosh. Park. A so it's not a permanent pool? one. It's a pop-up. They have those, uh, you can it? see the tractor trailer things right here. Oh, cool. And then the pool is right next to it. You guys can see there's some sand there. They got cool little umbrellas. Oh, nice. That's a, What a great idea. You just decide to make it more and more of a public space. I want a pop-up pool. And could you yeah, get too. one in to an apartment? You yes, could get like right? a little pop-up hot tub. <laughs> that would be nice. Yeah. So you could just convert your waterbed. Um, <laughs> yeah. Yes. All right. So that's where you were, and didn't, weren't there like barbecue grills there? And you had to. There were like yeah, barbecue, grill barbecue grills. Barbecue grills, and then they, of course they have something called Smorgasburg on the weekends. Right. Uh, it's in Brooklyn in that park on Sundays, and then on Saturdays it's in Williamsburg, and it's. Gosh, I don't know, at least 50 local food vendors. So we're oh, talking about traps. local food. No, yeah. actually like food vendors with their little like booths and stuff. Oh, cool. But so many of them. Wow, that's great. Yeah, and I then they go. have one pier is dedicated to handball courts and squash courts right. and a whole soccer field and a roller skating rink all on one pier. It's massive. Wow, and that's free. That's not like Chelsea Piers where you pay all like you know, $1,000 a month. You remember, Church, so New Yorkers like all Chelsea Pierce is over here. But so, uh, did you go? Did you play tennis? Did you play racquetball? Did you did you go? You know what I did? Pool? They had this really cool yeah. little thing, and I wanted to get involved, but you know, I wasn't dressed right because they were doing this little boot camp thing, and they were actually like crawling on all fours. No, please, you know? we don't want to see you crawl on all fours. That's not a sight I want to see. <laughs> Oh, well, you know, we could put some food down. But anyway, <laughs> but you said At the lines were really cheese. long. <laughs> you. <laughs> <laughs> you said the lines were really long. That's what you said, right? Uh, the lines were really long in the food truck, but there are so many people around and so many places to go that it didn't feel that crowded. Well, that's not what you told me before. You told me the lines were really long. I know, long. but I get to change my story once you, I'm on yeah, air. Yeah, okay. All right. Well, yes, that. you can change your story. But you know that the thing is, we were talking about lines, how New Yorkers love lines. So I happen to be not in New York this weekend, but I was up in Martha's Vineyard this weekend in a little town called Edgartown, lovely Edgartown. Yes. And there was this huge line in front of the old Wailing Church. If anybody's ever been there, it's where all the events are. And I saw a sign saying, find your roots. So I thought it was Skip Gates, who's Professor Henry Louis Gates from Harvard, who does that amazing show about finding your roots. And I thought, well, let me check it out. Like, I just sort of got in line, you know, because I didn't even know what they were doing there. There was no other sign. And here's a hint, guys, looking <laughs> at the show. You guys can see a hint right now. Yes. Oh, my gosh. Okay, yes. So I get in line. I walk up the steps, and I'm like, um, hi, what is this for, and do you have any tickets left? And they're like, no, I'm sorry. We're sold out. Um, it's for uh, David Sedaris, and I don't didn't even know who David Sedaris was. I'm sorry. I've been ribbed by Shane about that a couple times. Yeah, okay. You guys have a little screenshot here. He's the coolest guy. Of course, they're from yes. the South. 
and his sister is Amy Sedaris, who had this fantastic show called anyone? Nobody Strangers knows with Candy. Come on, like yeah. it's '90s. It's They're like not. Nobody's cool gonna show. know it. Yeah, I'm sorry, they weren't yeah. even alive in the '90s. Well, they no, were like they, were, they were. They Candy, were. How old were you in the '90s? In the back of their. You were like two, right? Their chair. Two in 1990. Yeah. So you know they don't know a show from God knows when. I mean, like. I never heard of it oh, myself. Oh, wow. It's okay. like Monty Python, but with a woman, and she's cool. Yeah, okay. Well, David Sedaris. <laughs> so I, they were sold out, but somebody, I said, okay, well, thanks. I didn't even know who he was. Somebody turned around and said, hey, you want an extra ticket? I have an extra ticket. And um, handed me a ticket, and I went in, and I sat down, and I got, like, a third row seat on the aisle. It was cool. So it turns out Amazing. David Sedaris was actually, and Henry Louis Gates was in the audience. Um, because he's doing a show with uh, David Sedaris on Greek descent people with Tina Fey in December. I forgot to tell you about that. Or November. He is the funniest guy. It was the greatest show, one of the greatest shows I ever saw. So if you get a chance to go see him on tour, see him. He's funny. <laughs> it was a riot. He is so irreverent. I mean, he makes yes. us look tame. Like he's we're like, like a Sunday like school like teachers. <laughs> Obama at the, whatchamacallit. Yes. Thing. Well, Obama. He was really funny at the. What is that? The media press awards they well, guys, actually, the dinner that they yeah. have. Yeah. Well, Obama that. was texting me because I was asking if he was coming to it at this event, and he was yes, texting me. Yes, of course me. he was. No, he was. He was texting me, telling me that he would be there soon. But he and Michelle were going to come up in a couple weeks to Martha's Vineyard because I'm very close friends with Brock. Didn't Obama. you snap this picture <laughs> right here? Didn't you snap that picture of him? Yes, that's yeah. that's him waving at me right oh, there. Yeah, that's there you that's go. him. Everybody thinks that's just a generic picture, but. That's me. Everyone on the whole entire it. planet. <laughs> Don't worry about Reuters and their copyright. Oh, gosh. It's just... I should get credit for that picture because <laughs> that's how happy he was to see me. I can't, I'll tell you about it. You know, something uh, just to make a note on Obama, there's a, a lawsuit going on in Congress right now. That's true. Um, the Republican, uh, how, Republicans in the House of Representatives are suing Obama uh, for, we're not sure. Okay. All right. I have a really good question. Yeah. I wonder which ambulance chasing lawyer convinced the Senate or the House, the House, <laughs> to sue him because evidently, you know how they have those advertisements on TV? Call yeah. now. Call do you now. Have a, it was probably a late neck? night commercial, yeah. Yes. If you want to sue the president, call now between now and 3 a.m. and there will be no charge. It will be no upfront cost. We are experts. <laughs> That's Don't right. suffer anymore. We've sued <laughs> dozens of other. Presidents of other countries, and we've succeeded. Actually, the truth is, there's apparently been no lawsuit to a sitting president in history. This one is really, really particular. I think they're suing him because he's vacationing in Martha's Vineyard. I heard that. I, I don't know if that's true, but like there was a lot of talk about how he was playing pool, drinking beer, and going to Martha's Vineyard. So I think wow. they're all uh, it's in it. the Constitution. That guy sounds like the kind of guy I want to hang out with, actually. <laughs> so there you go. Well. All right, speaking of that, we want to talk about CSI because we've got to move it along yeah, here. Yeah. CSI, we are actually um, at this really amazing place called Center for Social Innovation, and we have somebody who's truly awesome today joining us. She is uh, a finalist. Um, well, actually, in the popular vote, we'll be specific about it because we aren't, we actually right. aren't. She was, Fox News. she was selected <laughs> to be part of it. She submitted hers, and she actually was number six in the popular vote. Yeah. Which is fantastic, especially for civic entrepreneurship or civic innovation, civic engagement, all those words. Civic engagement in particular is what these all these applications were for. How do you get citizens to either self-govern themselves using apps and getting better communication between each other and with what's happening on with them with around them, as well as how do you uh, better communicate with your politicians? Well, this was um, hashtag NYC big app, and I want to introduce her. Um, it's Carol Chirinos, and she's from FinBot. It's yes. at FinBot Mobile. Excellent. Hey, Welcome. hey there, Yay. Carol. Yay! Hey, here she comes. Hey, thanks so much for joining us. And I have to say, uh, this is really funny. Uh, when I realized what the name of your uh, app was, it immediately made me think of something Don't else. Even and ask. let's see. Look at this. Oh, Do gosh. you know what those are? They're called the FinBots. And they're actually, if you've ever seen Austin the movie, Powers. Austin, Austin Powers. Powers. Yeah. So the know. fembots are here, and of course we're not okay. talking about Let's those to today. So there you go, here? not to those. We're talking about fembots, which is so much cooler and so much more, uh, hopefully. Can I introduce them. Carol? Do you mind? Yes. Okay, Carol. You are kind of really cool. Carol is part of um, CSI. She's a member of CSI. She's here for the summer. Um, and she came up, like I think, kind of on a lark. 
Uh, she's an econ uh, economics major. You have your undergraduate degree. You're in a master's degree program at the University of Florida? At Florida State University. Florida State University. This is what an economist looks like in 2014. I just want you to know. And by the way, <laughs> all, the, all you guys who are uh, part of those other schools, FSU is not Florida. Her, what she said before, is it's not the same. Florida's, don't get all, <laughs> man, it's They're okay. totally different. All right, Colleges it's like the go Yankees crazy and the when Mets, you call right? them like, you know, like USC and University UCLA. Of, of Florida yeah. versus Florida State. Could we State. get to the facts? We don't really care about that. I just oh, want to so talk important. to you. <laughs> Carol, I want to ask you a question. Okay, so you created this app that you designed this app, and you're in the process of creating it and developing it. Yeah. Um, you created an app for financial literacy for young adults, but anybody like, you know, sort of the, towards the end, end of high school, early college, 16 to 24 through college. And it's really to find out, to show them how to handle their money. And, and how did you come about doing that? Why did you do that? Yeah, um, it actually came from a part-time job in college. Um, I was totally dead set on getting into financial analysis and consulting and making all this money. I started working at Bank of America as a teller part-time. Um, and I worked at this location where all of my customers were young adults or they were low-income, middle-income people and it was just shocking to me to find out how little people knew about banking considering how important it is in your life. Uh, were they bouncing checks? Is that what you're saying? It, everything. We had people bouncing checks. I had somebody who didn't know what the FDIC was. I had somebody who asked me about opening up a safe deposit box to put cash in there. Um, and we laughed. I think it might be safe. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you know, it was like six years ago now almost that it was a collapse of the markets practically. Right. Yeah, so like, but what made you get into, oh, turn your cell phones off, everybody that includes you. Um, <laughs> um, what made you get into it? What made you get into economics? I mean, like, how did, how, where did you come up with this fascination for how economies work? It's not so easy. I mean, economics is pretty complicated. Are you, are you, do you have a math background? Um, that actually came from being a kid in high school. Um, I took my first economics class and everybody thought it was super boring. Um, and I thought it was interesting and it was for similar reasons. It was because I took this class and I was like, wow, if everybody knew about this, we would have a much better functioning economy. Financial literacy is the same. If everybody knew about this, we would have way less people in debt, way less people in financial trouble. People just don't know. Yeah. Well, what are you talking about? Yeah, and yeah. I love the fact that you're transitioning it to an app and making it approachable to the generation that you're specifically trying to reach, which is a really good idea considering so many folks are on their phones all the time and if you can make a really approachable way for them to learn about this stuff it'll be good so talk to me about some of the ideas of like why an app you know like what the structure actually would be like absolutely when I started thinking about financial literacy and people learning about their personal finance it seemed to me that what we have now which is workshops and classes and books that's not how we're reaching people anymore it's completely outdated we have technology and technology is what's coming up next it's how we're learning schools are using it or we're trying to get them to use them and it just seemed like a natural step how do you reach these people will you reach them on what they're already using their knee deep in their tech so that's where you go what do you find so fascinating about economics that when you were in high school, what was it that you said, if people knew about this, what part of this are you talking about? Well, when you think about high school economics, it's really basic stuff, right? So as I moved on later on, I learned other things about economics and my major and my undergrad and graduate. But I think the click moment was, and I don't know if you've even heard of, you know, the when we talk about the invisible hand mm -hmm. <laughs> and when we talk about these market forces that guide everything. It was a little moment of snap at being, what, 15, 16, thinking, wow, you know, we argue so much about this, but classical theory tells us things that people seem to have completely gotten away from. And, I mean, there's reasons for that, but it was that moment where I had that moment of, I need to find out more about this because I think that somewhere within this field lies a lot of answers to problems. Yeah, I agree with that. But like, whose invisible hand do you think there is there? Do you think it could be um, Boehner's, like the mm -hmm. House Speaker? It could, could be, be. It could be Barack Obama's. I mean, like, yes, that's whose true. hand is over there? And I, and I feel like <laughs> all very visible. 
Yeah, that's a little more visible. Who's the invisible hand? Like, is it the Koch brothers? It might be. Might be. (laughs) I I mean, that's a great question, too, to think about for a second. Like, when you're looking to approach these people about their financial understanding, you know, you're, you're doing it for the young people. Are you also thinking about people who might not know about finances and also be adults? Absolutely. And, I mean, those were most of the people who inspired this project as a teller at the bank. But you have to start somewhere. And the most approachable group is these young adults who are already on their phones. And they're actually thinking, you know, when we're talking about adults from, uh, young adults from middle income households, they're thinking about this stuff. They're going, oh my gosh, I'm in college. I have no idea how to manage my finances. I've ran tons of formal and informal surveys. How do you feel about your finances? And 16 and 24 year olds are going into college, they're leaving high school, they're thinking about this stuff. I would love to branch out this information to older adults, to younger kids. You have to start somewhere. Well, you know, um, just to, um, to say a couple things, you can find out more about her app, um, Carol's app, on uh, is, it's uh, finbotmobile.com. And uh, she is running a uh, Kickstarter campaign starting when? Starting next Thursday. Okay, so you can find Excellent. it on Kickstarter, but go to her website. But I just want to mention, too, that the invisible hand, for anybody who doesn't know, was Adam Smith in Wealth of Nations. He talked about an invisible hand that moved the markets, and I think yes. we still think that there must be I, I one think somewhere. So. Yeah, yeah, I feel like yeah, there is that. And by the way, that's August 14th for those of you guys who are watching us out of sync with real time. So August 14th, 2014 is when that cool... Uh, Indie, I always say Indiegogo. No, it's Kickstarter. Go. Kickstarter. Well, you know what? I want to say thank you because we're, we're, of course, we talk too much. But yes. you, we could talk to you forever. We love what you're doing. We're going to keep supporting it. Can you stick yes. around and we want to call you back a little bit later in the show? Yeah, we'd love to have you back. All right. Thanks for being here. Appreciate right. it. Bye. Thanks. Um, awesome. Yeah, so, so awesome. good. Yeah. It's always great to have yeah. uh, folks like that. <laughs> um, I used to feel so uh, slightly less smart every time I sit down with folks who, are, who know so much about economics, like yourself, actually, well, actually having written a book yeah. and and your understanding of it. So, I actually I agree with her that economics is fascinating, and I'm really interested in the history of it. But you know, right now we have a really uh, we have a technology um, problem on top of a financial problem. We have what's called a digital divide. Big we, deal. We like to talk about how New York's two different cities. I mean, like a lot of people don't think about a hundred bucks a month for the internet, which you know you get your access, your phone, or whatever. Um, and your television at the same and time. And the digital divide, too, just to jump in here and say a little bit about, you know, Harlem is one component of it, and what they're planning to do there when Monica talks about that is great. But the digital divide, you know, it's one thing to give people the Internet, but it's another thing to actually show them how to use it or, yeah. you know, give them ideas yeah. of how to use it or even enable them to move beyond use technology, the tool itself. Remember, right? he's a tech wizard, so I like emails, text, that's all we can do here. I mean, this guy, like, you know, creates software or whatever the heck he does. We don't yeah. even know. Well, but at least he, I can tell other people. How yeah, to do when he explains software to you or technology, it's like, I have to really, it, it's not easy. Anyway, yeah. um, we were at this, uh, Shane and I were both at a New York City event, uh, it's called City and State, and mm-hmm. it was looking over the Freedom Tower, do you remember? Yep. And Gail Brewer, the Manhattan Borough President, was there. There was uh, a New York senator from Brooklyn um, who talked about this digital divide in Brooklyn really hit hard in East New York and Bed-Stuy uh, and on a lot of different areas in New York that yep. are uh, low income. And I think it's the same in the Bronx, huge swaths right. of the boroughs that don't have any access to Internet. And they're saying, how can kids learn? Most of the, ki- the learning that we do is online, and you certainly need the Internet to do your homework. How can they learn if they don't have any um, access to the web? So up in Harlem, the Furman Foundation, it's a family foundation, um, pretty cool New Yorkers, they actually underwrote a program which gives a, almost 100 blocks from 110th to 138th Street, and then from Frederick Bug- Douglas Boulevard to Madison Avenue, your neck of the woods. Um, they created free internet uh, for that whole entire thing. They said it's yes. 95 blocks. Wow. Uh, and yeah. that, that's great. I, what I hope the next step is is that we design programs to actually use that. that well, that, we do. That's really the next that step. That actually, yeah. that's a good way to introduce our next guest who I, I absolutely adore this guy. I, like, I, I just met him not so long ago. He wrote a, an article in the New York Times. He's really a brilliant thinker, bring, brilliant writer. Uh, we talked about him. Dax, we talked about you before you came in. So, we don't want to tell you what we said. You'll have to watch it. But um, anyway, uh, 
Dax? You might be shocked. <laughs> You'll find out about it. Yeah. Dax is uh, really one of the um, most interesting thought leaders in the um, education innovation field that I can think of. And I am really honored to have him here. And we have a, it's a privilege. He is the executive director of the After School All Stars. And he had invited us to be judges at a CEO boot camp. Um, yeah, and that's career exploration. It's not necessarily about kids becoming CEOs, but it is about them discovering their passion, finding out what they love, and getting to know it. And so to be part of this, uh, exploring what it is for these kids to create an app and work in that space, yeah. I can't wait to chat with them about okay, it. Okay, so let's bring them on. Dax, yep. Dax Devlon Ross, come out and sit right here. Yay! <laughs> Awesome. Excellent. Right. Was I right? I Thanks mean, was so I right, much. people? I mean, girls, yes. I'm just asking you. Okay. <laughs> Hi, Dex. How are you? Oh, great. Cool. You are? Yeah. It's kind of hot in here. Uh, okay. <laughs> no, okay. He's talking about outside. <laughs> Listen, you created this program. I don't know if you created it, but we were at a program that you were directing called the App School. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Right. So I will not take credit for having created it. It actually was a cre creation of our national program uh, team. So App School All Stars is a national program in a number of different cities, uh, 14. And um, we were running a camp, the CEO boot camp, and part of that camp was a mobile app design contest where a group of middle school students, and they were all middle school students, uh, worked together over the course of a week while they stayed on the campus of St. John's University to design a mobile app. And in order to do that, they had to actually conduct focus groups, they had to create a marketing plan, business proposal, then obviously you all came in as judges. We had professionals coming from different fields and they had to prepare themselves and they dressed up and put on ties, some of them, and, and presented their ideas. And it was, it was a really rewarding experience, I think, for them and even for the judges, I would say, and for myself um, as uh, part of that program. It was very rewarding for me, particularly because I got a chance to hear kind of see how these kids were thinking about their technologies and coming up with apps and just even the way that they thought about the needs of the people who would be using this thing. I was stunned at the fact that they could put those thoughts together. I don't know that I was even half that smart in middle school. Well, they came up the winning app, which was so cool. It was called Charity. Uh, wasn't it Charity, the one that won? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah, um, you'll have to even refresh me a little bit on it. Okay. Yeah. I'll hear what you got to say about no, it. No, I love Charity. Charity was this cool little app that allowed kids yeah. uh, or anyone to, who used their phone to share or donate or share content yeah. or share donations to anyone else. It but was what a great idea. They aggregated all the nonprofits in the area and the communities. So wherever community you were in, if you wanted to donate clothes or food or money, you they would show you all the options that you had. I mean it was just these are talking thirteen year olds, fourteen year olds, and they were so sophisticated and, and so innovative that I was inspired. So can is awesome. Can you tell us a little bit about your program, the whole program, the after school all stars? What are you trying to do and where are you trying to do it? So, you know, it is a comprehensive after school organization, and there are a number of them in the country, but we are one of the larger um, middle school focused after school organizations in the country. And our, our objective and our idea is so we want to ensure that our, our young people are safe, that they grow up, they're healthy, they're able to uh, attain their college and career goals, that they're able to find a career that they love and are passionate about, and ultimately give back to the community because that's a big part of it. It's this idea of service. So, in, in as much as you came out and and, and provided a service in being a judge, we hope that they understand that part of their responsibility is to do the same thing for other people when they come up as well. That's awesome. And you know, you and I had a conversation. Like, uh, you went to a Quaker school as a kid. You went to something in Philadelphia, a friend school, right? Yeah, I went to Sidwell Friends. Uh, it was a Quaker school in Washington, D.C., and I went there from my middle school years on. And a big part of our, our time there was service, and a big part of the experience was understanding like some of the privileges that you had as a, just as a, as a student at that school, and, um, the need to be exposed to um, both the, the, the need that's out there and the ways that you can help and the ways that you can support other people. So that I know was inscribed into me as a young person and I think it really started to emerge in my 20s and so this desire to do this kind of work has always been strong for me. Yeah, wanting to give back. Okay, so that brings us to social entrepreneurship, which is really combining giving back, doing service, 
with a for-profit business model, which is like kind of tough, but that's what we're all doing here at CSI. And yeah, that, and your varied history sort of complements all that. I mean, you've got this like great writing and music background as far as your understanding of words and putting things together, uh, and your studies even in that space. Are so, you not that? So I, I, I'm, 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 I'm feeling, I'm feeling overwhelmed. Like all these things I've done. I mean, I'm, I did music too. Wow! Like, tell me more. That's no, just hot right now. Really, what I, what I'd love for you to talk about is some of the ways that you, you think communicating with words, as you've done for many years now, you know, through the books that you've written and other things that you've done. What is that really? How, how has that helped you in this role? Um. Well, you got to write a lot of grants. Um, <laughs> that's the first way. But uh, I think that um, the ability to um, to to put your thoughts together in front of people on the spot, um, no matter who that person is, what walk of life they come from, to be able to engage with people uh, is something that I really value and I've learned as, as a journalist, as a writer, has, has taken me very far. But at the same time, I think it's a skill that I want to see young people really begin to embrace and, and understand that that's the tool. I, I talk a lot about social capital and the ability to acquire social capital being, I think, one of the, um, the principal ways that young people can advance themselves. So we talk about college and college access, and I think that's extremely important. But I also think there's a relational thing that happens, and I think that's what we're trying to do in the after-school space is, is really help folks and help young people access the, um, some of the relational skills that can allow you to na navigate the world successfully. Being able to talk to a CEO, being able to talk to someone who's you know, a line worker in an organization or in a company, being able to relate to people, being able to tell your story and identify with other people and have the people identify with your experience. Those are the things that allow people to be successful. If you ask successful people why, they, it's often because they knew people and people knew them and they got along and that helped to propel them to the place that they are. You have to be strong in your skill set, but you also have to have an ability to negotiate relationships. Sure. That's awesome. You know, and I, I, one thing that we talked about, and actually you're expert at that because we have some of your friends here today. Our next guest is one of um, Dax's friends who we met uh, at the event, uh, one of our new friends. We'll talk about him in a minute. But I wanted to just ask you because we had a conversation. We had a really, I mean, you're so easy to talk to and there's so many subjects to talk to you about because you're on recidivism, you're on um, education for at-risk youth. Sports. Sports. I mean, music. There's so much... Basketball. Well, we were talking about public schools. So you work with twi Title I schools here in New York and Queens, right? And in um, also schools in uh, Newark, New Jersey. Yep. So we're opening a new chapter in Newark. We um, are expanding in the fall, and we're going to be in Manhattan as well. So, you know, we're expanding our footprint. This is a really interesting moment in after school, as a matter of fact. There's a lot of emphasis that's being placed upon it by the new mayor in New York City. Um, they've earmarked 190-some million dollars after school expansion focused specifically on middle school. So this is a really compelling moment where we're seeing a focus being placed on it. Yeah, and you were telling me, like I said, so um, we were talking about the inefficiencies of public school, and you came up with a really good point. You said they can't do everything. They can't be everything. There's only so much time in the day and so much that teachers can do, especially with the economics of it, but also in these big classrooms. And that's where the after-school all-star program comes in handy because not only do they fill up the next three hours with different programming, but also they um, connect the kids to the community. Um, and you're the executive director for that. So what, what would be an after-school program? What, what are they like? Like... The after-school programs, they, they all, there's a lot of consistency across the board. I really consider that all the other organizations that are doing this work in this city and everywhere else collaborators in the same enterprise. We're trying to really, you know, address certain um, issues that we see in society, whether it's the obesity crisis that we're seeing with young people, whether it's a dropout crisis that we're seeing, whether it's a, a lack of, of 21st century skills that people need to be successful, or whether it's, you know, attainment of, of, of the kind of skills that you need to be successful in college. We're trying to address a lot of the same stuff. I think the point I was trying to make around schools, and I'm a former New York City school teacher myself, was that we, we at some point along the way in our sort of, in our urban experience, and I, think this, I, I speak about an urban experience because I am, I am an urban being, um, schools became the center of, of sort of the neighborhood, the community. You know, I think churches are no longer the same way that they used to. They, do, they, they no longer have the same sort of hold that they might have had. Other institutions have, have deteriorated or fallen apart or fallen away, I should say. So schools became the place where a lot of emphasis was placed. 
and a lot of pressure is placed on teachers and on administrators to fulfill sort of these expectations around achievement and around social adjustment and around all these different things, keeping the kids off of school, engaging the families, it's a lot. And there is a community school model that's emerging that could really help address a lot of that. But we think after school is a really important, valuable place where kids can develop some of those non-cognitive skills that maybe don't get addressed the same way in a school day. So we're talking about some of the problem solving and some of the relationship building and some of the some of those kinds of skills that, you know, when you're in a class and you have to, a lot of, and frankly, a lot of the teaching has to be toward the test. And so how do we, you know, provide some of the things that they need, whether it's arts, whether it's sports, whether it's other kinds of enrichment. And that's what we're trying to do in that three to six spot. We want to know what they want. So we talk about youth choice and voice, asking them, what do you want to do in this time? And, and then trying to find the things that fit that. Is that robotics? Is it sports? And really looking for the people that provide those things and then providing the training and the development so that we can professionalize this work because it's all about professionalizing this work because the young people deserve that. They deserve a high quality and high standard of, 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 of uh, professionalism and the people that are providing services for them. And we do all of that. We're, a, as an organization, really committed to staff development, program development, and evaluation and all the things that you would expect to see in a school or expect to see in an organization or a company or a firm. That's great. I mean, and you are inspiring. And the one thing I noticed about the kids when we were at that uh, event in the CEO boot camp was the self-esteem that they had and the confidence and the and poise. the lobbying abilities. Oh, oh my God, we they were, were the lobbying us. Oh, totally. Up to us going, <laughs> oh, and by the <laughs> way, awesome. um, my app is blah yeah, blah no, blah. And I would love to tell you the incentive. What was the incentive? I mean, come on, there was a nice incentive associated with them there winning that app, right? They love those the headphones, right? Yeah, they got Beats yeah. headphones, all yeah, of them. So they, we told them that at the beginning of the week, and that was like the eyes went eagle. <laughs> like everything. Yeah, that's I'm all they <laughs> saw for the whole rest of the week. Okay, was like, money talks, but you know. Yeah. A little break here, yes, like a little yeah. segment break, and come back with Dax. And we're also going to bring on Zach Grauman, who is also uh, creating a fascinating program uh, on options for um, alternative education, or just yes. you know to really fill in the gaps. So, thank you, Dax. Awesome. To be continued. Let's freeze. And um, so I want to. Yeah. What I'm going to do, guys, is I just want to talk you through some of the ways that you can interact on social media right now. So go ahead and get in there and that. Uh, make sure that you get your social media hats on and get your at Shane Snipes, at Monica Mitchell, Mitchell, you can see there. And then Dax actually has a cool Twitter account too. So talk to him about your ideas with the program uh, around after school. If you're a parent or if you have ideas around after school, you might be a researcher. Uh, and that's the, that's the part that I'd love for you guys to interact with us with. Um, we also have some cool music that we're going to play uh, and get you guys in the mood for what we're doing here. Uh, and we'll have that going on. So one of the things that we always do in our show is we 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 love America. We love America because I want to welcome you all to um, this is Facts News uh, with just the facts here. I'm Clement D. Nyer and this is my buddy and co-host. This is Randy Paul. Say hi, Randy Paul. How hey you doing? there. All right, Randy Paul. So we like hi, to talk there. about. We we we. I'm sorry, I couldn't play that song, but I could sing it for you. It's a pro. Um, to be a American. That's our theme song. Where but we're having a little technical I know problem I have, here. Please. Yeah, <laughs> that is not the lyrics oh. there, Randy Paul. But today we're going to be talking to you a little bit about education. Okay, education is really important. Right. And we we think it's really important because I've been through the word, seventh but I know. grade. Uh, did you education. get? Well, how high Ed did you get education. in school? Did you get to a seventh grade? Were you in? What, what's you, that? Seventh grade. You didn't get what's to school? seventh grade. No, not school. That is school. That's no. That's the thing on your head, right? No, I don't want to talk to you about that, Randy Paul. To focus, like, don't be talking about. No, it's about, the thing inside your skin on your head. No, this school. I, Randy. Did you have some beer before we were doing the show? He, he kind of gets off topic of sometimes, but he's really he's a really smart guy. And today we're going to talk about education, and we're going to be talking about that that liberal in 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue, that Obama character, that Obama. I mean, like right now, those Democrats are are complaining that you know that. The Republicans are just doing their job. They are going to sue. Hey, you know what? What? I, do y'all want some, some squirrel stew? I got some of the squirrel stew. Now, bring me the fault. Right Stay there. on topic here. Stay on oh, topic here because they're going to sue. Did you know they're going to sue the president? 
President Obama, that's the liberal at 60 Homes, Pennsylvania name, Avenue. Is, his first name is not Sue. His first name is the other kind of African name I can't pronounce, okay? I don't oh. know what his name is. Oh, but it's, oh but yeah, it's that's right. Vaca oh, or yeah. Vaca okay. or I'm America. not sure. We're America, and you know this what? Is I heard, I'm proud to be American. I heard that I can get my... my no. Listen to me. I'm going to tell you something, okay? I'm going to tell you that we are suing him because he goes to Max's Vineyard all the time. All he does is play bull, drink beer, and there's people killing each other. And I'm not just talking about, you know, in the streets of New York or down south in Kentucky. I'm talking about, or, you know, like in our backyard. So here's what we want. Yeah. We want you to yeah. hashtag us. Obama. Obama MV. MV. For stands for we want to hear what visitors. you're saying. We want it. This is just the facts. We're going to do an official survey. You stay tuned. It's going to be a very official scientific That's survey. Right. And I, if anybody wants some vermin uh, stew, I have some because I I like to clean right. my yard out. No, we don't want to talk to him of... anymore. Okay. Like, that's enough, Randy Paul. Stay tuned. We'll come back at you. We want to go back to the show, but it's just the facts with Randy Paul and Climate Denier. That's right. Thank you. All right. There you go. Um, hey, so like that was really fun and like um we just have very interesting guests come on this show. We love them because we want to give people a full voice. We want to have every every kind of view on the show possible, you know, cuz this is America. <laughs> it is. So let's introduce our next guest who we just love and you introduced us to him. Do you want to um, say a little bit about him? Do you want to introduce him for us? Bring him on. Um, I will only say that he was very, very, um, very warm and, and very, very welcoming to this idea of coming onto the show with me. So I'm really excited to have him and I think his idea is, is top flight. I wouldn't have him, I wouldn't have invited him otherwise and he's a really cool guy. We know each other. And he had no exactly. idea what he had no idea what he was getting into, did he? No, he had no idea. No, did, yeah. All right. Did he know? <laughs> All right. Well, listen. He is the founder, and come on out, Zach. He's the founder Zach. of SuitUpNYC.com, oh, and he's suited up for this show. He's, like, totally suited up. Um, and, hey. Zach, I don't know if you know this, but our... Hey there. Welcome. Thank I don't know if you know this, but our, some of our production folks in the room here are, are having a little, like, hot flash over you coming in, oh. and then Dax coming in. Oh, like there's a okay. lot of hot, there's a lot Excuse of me, maybe you ought to not that. sit so close to him. <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah, you yes. missed that. No, that wasn't us. That was Climate Denier oh, yeah. and Randy Paul. That's our alter oh, egos. Oh, yeah, there's other people that were just in there. Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Yes. So welcome. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you for having me. We, we love what you do. So tell us a little about SuitUpNYC.com is a program where you have middle school kids come into corporations and learn about business development for a day, right? Am I right about that? I think you're in the general ballpark. That's well, give us the exact Sure, ballpark. I'll give you this the snapshot. So we, uh, the overall goal is to increase career awareness for students. Um, and uh, maybe I'll, I'll back up and give you kind of the genesis of where we started. I used to be on, um, fortunately, I was on this board in a, a Catholic school in Brooklyn. And I wasn't raised Catholic, so imagine me and literally like eight nuns on the board. Um, I, I so, know a lot of nuns. Yeah, so we're in, I remember them. I'm already Sister in over Mary my head, Elizabeth. Right? And they, uh, <laughs> there were no rulers, right? <laughs> was a lot, there was a lot going on. Um, and so we're on this, on this board and I'm kind of around the budget. But one of the things we did is we polled our students, our middle school students. We asked them a simple question, what do you want to be when you grow up? And they came back to us, and 84% of our kids told us they wanted to be one of a couple things. They wanted to be Nicki Minaj or some sort of celebrity. They wanted to be LeBron James or some sort of professional athlete. Or they wanted to be what mom or dad do. And it kind of hit me. What was mom and dad? Which was a combination of things, but mainly uh, con ed workers, where they were from, or where a lot of the parents in the area worked. A couple kids wanted to be um, traffic attendee or with people waving traffic across the street, um, McDonald's, fast food workers, things like that. Um, Wait, well, M Mickey, uh, Nicki Minaj sounds. I, I, I want to be Mickey Minaj. I, 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 I who doesn't, be who doesn't want to be? Yeah, um, <laughs> I, I want to be her or Justin okay, Bieber. Okay, I'm working on it right now. No, really, we don't want to be. But <laughs> I, I, I get what you're saying. It's really, it's really. 
challenging, right? To think that kids, that's their options that they see. Right. And, and the, the, the takeaway, it's smack me in the face, is that you realize that we're byproducts of the systems around us and the people and places around us. And for myself, um, we're a, I didn't grow up wealthy, but I went to a good, good high school and a good college, and even I didn't know what I wanted to be. Imagine these kids in low-income areas. Um, that was kind of the, the genesis of everything. Where so are you from, by the way? I'm from West Hartford, Connecticut. So right outside of Hartford, okay. Connecticut. Um, so the hood. The hood. Yeah, you're from the hood. I don't know if it's the hood. hood. Close enough, right? <laughs> um, but um, one of um, sort of thinking, you know, how do we solve this problem, right? Um, how do you? Just, how can you be a biomedical engineer if you don't know what that is? Um, so essentially, SuitUp was born, um, and where it started, where I brought a group of people where I worked at UBS, um, where I still work full time in, in wealth management, and we brought our team of people and we took them to a school. And we brought the company into the classroom. And what we do now today is we run a one day business competition with the students, where the students solve a real problem for real companies. So they'll create a new shoe for Nike, or they'll design a new flavor for Starbucks. And it's competitive, so they're divided into teams, and the employees they get to, I mean, they coach the kids, they work with the students, and help them do basic things like picking a target market, and they design a new shoe, if it's a shoe, and name a shoe, pick a celebrity endorsement, understanding what a brand is, um, and the winning team gets a cash prize. And what happens is, is you, you start to kind of blow these kids' minds, right? Because they're never going to look at Nike the same, and they're never going to look at, if it's UBS that's coming, or PIMCO we've worked with, and BlackRock, some of the banks we've worked with, they'll never look at these companies the same way again. Right, and so you're, what you're doing is exposing what's mysterious, which is what uh, Carol, we had, um, Carol was an app developer right. for financial literacy. She was talking about economics being this mystery and money management being this mystery for right. so many people. Actually, it's probably straight through the generations, like right, right up to some people die not knowing, understanding economics. Mm -hmm. But what you're doing is really presenting them, you're kind of uh, taking the veil off, lifting the veil of what's available and giving them more options. So. This is awesome. I just have one question. Do yeah. you now go into the classroom, or do, do the kids come to the um, corporation or company? So it's um, the short answer is it's run like a business in that we pitched a company to say, we'll run your community service day. And, and so instead of the soup kitchen, instead of um, Habitat for Humanity, which are all noble activities, let's engage your employees the right way. So I believe that if you're going to get a volunteer day where you're working with one of the best firms in the world, where everybody's a college graduate, and you're going to get a day of their time, you better change the world. Maybe that's a classic millennial in me, but you better do something great. Um, so this gives them the ability to have a simple community service event that's exciting and impactful, because um, they're changing these kids' lives in a short period of time. And so to answer your question, we're really flexible on content. So it's up to the, the company in terms of how we can structure it. So some of our employers, or some of our clients, if you will, they bring the company to the school directly. Some have the kids come to them, and other times we've had it at a, a neutral site, whether it's a university or, or things like that. And that's public schools in New York? You public bring... schools, charter schools. Charter schools are ripe for this. Right. Um, and more of it's going to kind of get active teachers engaged in the business side of things. Right. Um, but frankly, I mean, one of the, strong, the hardest parts is that it, the curriculum we have and we fund as a taxpayer doesn't necessarily support programs like this, and that it's, right. you know, it's not in the Common Core. Mm -hmm. um, so it's mostly right now at charter schools and that kind of thing. Mostly charter schools, magnet schools. We've done. You're gonna bring schools. it into the after school program. So historically, yes. Um, historically, yeah. we've worked. Um, our first competition was with after school all stars, and that's how um, before Dax and before I was even full time on suit up, um, this genesis started. And then reconnected with Dax, said, "Hey, we're doing this. It's it's ripe for what your kids are doing. It's exactly in tow." And um, what's what's rare um, and what I like about it is that. A lot of nonprofits, and I know you guys see this all day long, is a lot of nonprofits, they have the same mission, but they're not rowing in the same direction. And they're competing for funding, and they're competing yeah, for that. So to say to Dax, look, I'm not going to fight you for funding. I'm here to just make your program better. And if you win, I win, sort of thing. It's like a real Wall Street thing. If you win, I win, which is actually which, not on Wall Street. It's usually a losing person <laughs> on the other side of the trade. Know, the one percent winning in this is trade. <laughs> no, you know, there's always a loser on the other side of the yeah, trade. That's, and I, that's Wall I used to work on Wall Street. Here, here's the thing I wanted to bring to the foreground with that conversation here, because I feel like oftentimes when we create these really cool competitions, the outcomes are sort of the outcomes of the kids learning. But what about the outcomes of the actual things that co go on? And this is sort of to both of you guys. Like, 
are there outcomes? Is it even outcome driven, or is it the education alone is enough of an outcome? What do you guys? What do you think? Like, what's our what's our end goal? Is that is that really what you mean? Yeah, I mean, you run this thing. They're solving a problem for the company. Do they really end up solving it in your case? And in your case, is there some outcome in particular that you are going for? Takeaway. So I would say um, two sides of that coin. One, on one hand, you're solving a problem for a company. On one, if it's Nike, or I mean, there's value there. But also for the company who's bringing the, vault, the employees, they get a well-run, exciting, impactful, simple community service event, which they're looking for. And then in terms of solving a bigger problem in education, um, the, I believe, I think it's a home run to bring a company into the classroom. I think. You can teach a kid the Pythagorean theorem to teach him a squared plus b squared equals c squared. The better way to teach him, most teacher, most good teachers will tell you, is have the kid build a bridge. The more active way to learn that formula. Suit up. Our theory is to take that one step further and build that bridge for Caterpillar. <clears throat> excuse me, for Caterpillar or the state of New York or someone to fund that, and ideally have the company pay for a child to learn that. Getting into, you're getting into a very fine line between privatizing education, but if you can get a way for kids to learn about the real world while learning what they're supposed to be learning, then I think you have a home run and you solve a lot of problems we have in education. Well, I want to ask Dax, Dax about that because I'm really, um, I find that the private-public partnership is a really winning model. I think it's awesome, and I think that's where social entrepreneurship comes in. We need each other. So, Dax, what do you, what do you have to? I mean. Well, you know, we, I said, you know, the, the winning prizes for our, for our young people were actually uh, were these Beats headphones, and that is a function of our our national board. So on our national board, we actually have um, people who are very instrumental in founding the Beats, you know, the Beats Corporation. So you talk about the, the private and the, and the public working together. Um, and, and there's a piece that I want to also offer about sort of the why and what's the outcome of all of this. You know, we're sitting here and we're having a conversation, and we're off, we're, we're able to operate to some extent in the creative economy. You know, you're, you're able to sit here and create sort of something that we can broadcast on television, and it's very fulfilling for all of us. I think that that creative economy, you read Richard Florida's book about it years ago, but I think that creative economy is what we're trying to allow the other, other people to get access to. So traditionally, that creative economy is a rarefied space that you have to have a certain kind of pedigree in order to even know about and have access to. So how can you open that up so that other people can enjoy that? Because it is an enjoyable thing to be able to sit around, to sit down and do what you want to do with your mind. To be able to work and think about branding, like the idea to sit around a table and think about a shoe design, or to think about um, making a new flavor of coffee. This is what people get paid lots and lots of money to do. Why shouldn't some of these young, why shouldn't young people and work in our in our communities, in our schools, know that that exists as an option for them as well? Why should it only be that they can think about, you know? X, Y, and Z. You know, there there is a creative economy that is booming, that is robust, that is global, and that everyone should have access to. Especially since the bar for entry has been lowered because of this, all these devices, because of the internet, the the bar for entry is lower than it's ever been to create an app. So you ask, what's the next step? The next step is next summer we're able to actually create the app. So this summer it's we're able to think about the theory of it. The next summer is we're able to actually go and partner with a, 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 an app developer. So these they're those kids who have the winning app can actually develop it, and then it can actually go out and actually be something that's downloadable in the Play Store or the iTunes Store. So I actually do believe, and I want to see, and I hope to see the next step, which is the creation of the thing. And we need people to step up and help us to do that. You know, we have to create funding, and we need people to say, "That's a great idea. I want to help fund it. How can I do it?" Yeah, you know, and everything's coming back now. Um, I mean, in terms of businesses, uh, in terms of Wall Street, in terms of the big firms, in terms of the big corporate, um, you know, the Fortune 500s. There's this whole philosophy of yes, we want to have innovators. So you're part of a pretty straight ahead bank there. Um, you know, UBS. Yeah, pretty. Pretty yeah, straight ahead. Sort of. Yeah, you know, we we don't want to talk. You were there after the crisis, so we'll just forgive him. Um, uh, but you know, um, it's amazing it, how that works. No, you're talking about the creative economy. The creative economy is so uniquely interesting because there's so much focus on testing, math, science. All those skills are needed to put towards, they're like a foundation for creative innovation. They are not the end all, unless actually you're the person putting the algorithms together. Sorry, because I know you love algorithms. But unless you're the person that's putting algorithms together, what you really want to do in sure. finance and otherwise is innovation. I mean, even mortgage-backed securities were an innovation. They just sort of went off the deep end there. But all of this is innovation, you know, the new sneaker. 
uh, social entrepreneurs are actually taking social problems, which is what you guys are doing. So I love what you guys are doing. And, um, and I totally agree with you. That's where everything has to go. Take a social problem and apply an entrepreneurial solution to it. Well, the last thing I wanted to bring up for you guys on my end, at least, is I wanted to ask you about this idea of framing kids from low-income worlds as at risk. Is there an impact to that? Because, you know, there's so much in education theory and around education writing and education research where real things have really been talked about and research has been done around this. And I'd love to get both of your perspectives on that if you haven't. I'm really glad you pointed that out because... Um, you know, within sort of educational circles, people are really troubled by that term "at risk" because the the, the end the, the the rest of that is at risk of what, and who and who is not at risk if that's what we're talking about. We can be talking about underserviced because there is an underservice and that happens in the communities. You're talking about you know the, the lack of access to the internet in certain communities. That's an underservicing issue, not necessarily an at risk issue. I think that at risk is a very it's a it's a, a term that is used. Often, in, you know, to some extent, for the right reasons, to, to to acquire interest and to acquire the resources necessary to sort of uh, close a gap. When people talk about an achievement gap or an opportunity gap, we talk about more of as an opportunity gap than an achievement gap. Um, but I think that you know how we frame these things and how we frame young people is hugely important because that's all being processed in how we interact with them, what we think of them as, how we design the program, what the program right. looks like, right. what content what we put in there. What expectations we have. Right. Are, we, are we surprised when they're able to do something really exceptional versus, oh, I expected you to do this because if right. you're at risk, then maybe I don't expect you to do it. So it's how do we shift that language? And I'm really I'm glad you brought that up. And I don't have the entire answer, but I do think that there are other terms that may, may sort of have an empowering edge to them and may be less sort of... Um, divisive and, and less triggering that we should maybe think about shifting towards in our language to address the population that we're really talking about, yeah. which is more about you just there's a lack of services and a lack of resources than as opposed to just purely being at risk. I'm trying to think of how I want to say this. So if I look at, take myself for instance, when I grew up public school, but I have two parents that loved me that were together at home, I had a stable home, and parents that were involved in my education, very blessed to have that. And education model for that for that student works. If they've got stability at home and things like, and parents reinforcing what teachers are saying, for the most part our education model works. These at-risk children we're talking about, um, regardless of what you call it, the education model is different. They need they need more because it, when they go home it's all, it's, Lord knows what, what it is, right? Um, and, so, and so when you think about that, um, what I love about what our school officer is doing, what CEO, and what we're doing to suit up is these students that maybe because of things that are going on at home, because of the apps in their life, right? When they when they start participating, when they start learning in a different way, when they start working for Nike, when they start thinking about learning in a completely you know mind blowing way to themselves, you find that the behavior issues you normally see, they're not there anymore. You find that even when they lose the competition, they're not upset like you think they would normally be when they don't get what they want. Because they realize they learn, and they realize learn something different. I do these competitions. We do them all the time, and we have my, our big philosophy: we pick one winner. I don't believe in participation trophies. You work hard in school, you get an A. You work hard in the real world, you get paid. Um, and when students lose, right? So that they're one of, you know, nine of ten teams don't win. They're not upset because they realize, holy cow, I just took an idea from nothing and made it something. I worked with a team of people I never met before. They see this all happening. Um, when they get an F on a paper, they don't see that per se. So um, I guess the short answer of what you're saying is if we, <laughs> I guess the definition of being um, insan insanity is what doing the same thing over and over and expecting different results. So to keep <laughs> expecting that these, you're pumping money to, to help the at-risk kids exist in the same model that we're doing probably doesn't make sense. I actually, I actually, yeah, I, I think it's wonderful what you said. I love it, and I love what we're talking about here. I, I would love to just continue the conversation. We're running out of time, but I just want to say that um, I agree with you, though. I think we should change the at risk. Um, and Shane brought that up originally. I don't like that handle. It's very condescending, almost. It's, it's like you're right. Words have power, and what we say about ourselves shapes a lot of our our self image. And um, so it's really what you're talking about is empowerment education. And that's across the board because you had two parents that were home. How many kids that are still in, you know, maybe middle class families don't have two parents at home? 
or one of them's an alcoholic or God knows what. You know, there could be a million things going on there or mentally ill or whatever. Uh, so we're all, as you said, all kids are at risk. I mean, who's judging that? And um, I, I think we should come up with a new term. But might be one out there. I don't well, I want you to make it up because you're a writer. You're a creative uh, right. <laughs> writer. Tweet us. Wow, I'll make one up. Uh. <laughs> All right, that's Tweet. good. So we're running out of time, but um, there's more to say. If you guys want to, uh, you can get in touch with us um, at Good B or at That Matters Live and at that sh at Shane Snipes. And tweet us all out there. Uh, you also have at Dax Dev here and at, uh, what's your handle? At SuitUpNYC. I should know because we've been tech. Yeah, SuitUp. So um, if you could stick around for five minutes, we have a, a little game that we want to do. Um, it's just a little interactive game. And uh, you know, we're going to bring um, Fax News crew back. Uh, but if you can't, like, have a great day. Awesome to see you. You know, but still vote in. It's Obama. Obama MV, and we wanna we wanna ask you all questions. So yeah, um, for yeah. Sure. all right. So thanks for being here, Dax Devlon Ross. You rock. You're totally awesome. More to be talked about. We're gonna be working together. Yes, absolutely. Looking forward to the fall. Thank you. My pleasure. And, and you know thank what? you, Zach. My pleasure, guys. Thanks yeah. for having me. Yeah, and you, uh, Zach was one of the judges at the CEO you know booth. We were judging together. There were a lot of us. So. Yeah, no, we were, we love meeting you. Dax, Dax, excuse me, I lost my voice. Dax had the judges were kind of rolling deep, and you had a you had a good bench of judges. No, he did. He roll. <laughs> they were rolling deep, as you said, <laughs> really deep. <laughs> <laughs> so stick around. Uh, we've got a vote for you. We want to um we want to ask some of our uh, guests in the studio to come back on, and we want to talk to you guys. All right, so. Uh, hey there, welcome back everybody. I'm glad to be here. How y'all doing today? Oh yeah, getting excited. Well, we got a survey going on. Carol, can you come on back here, honey? Come yeah, on we, back here, we need a whole bunch of y'all in and, here. Come and Ron, on in. Ron Livingstone, are you out Ron there? Livingstone, We're bringing up some of our... Con oh. Come on in, Ron. Right, Don't get too close here, to me there, Come Dax. On. Don't get too close. <laughs> yeah. I can't be this is a, this, I can't tell you why. This is the <laughs> wait, this is the first time I've been around this many people of color and oh, well, no. I don't know when. <laughs> oh my god. He just says anything. Anything at all. And you know what? You're right though. That's right. Uh, <laughs> by the way, um Hello, Ronnie. How are you, honey? I'm good. All I'm right. Good. I'm just Wonderful just back feeling on the, the heat here. I'm just feeling the heat. Look at all these men here. This is a pretty girl. It's a pretty girl. I over know. To my right. we got She's an economist. Wait, can we switch seats here for no, a second? No. I just you, want to get a little closer to some of that. I am not letting you get close to her at oh, all. I'm man. like standing between you two. Wow. Uh, we want to talk about a very official scientific survey that we've been doing here. We want people to vote on this right now. We're going to take a survey in this room. It's going to be official. We want That's to right. know it's like 68% on um, Fox News. And by the way, this is Fax News, so don't mix us up. We're That's different. Right. We're, We're the real. Different. We're the real. We're man. the real facts. No, yeah. we are the real facts. Just That's the facts right. on Fax News. But on the Fox News, we saw that 68% of Americans, Americans, that's us, uh, do not approve of that Obama character, that liberal, that down that's in 1600 right. Pennsylvania Avenue. So we want to do one here, and we want to ask everybody one question. Okay, one right. question. You ready for it, Carol? We're going to ask you: Do you think that um, Congress should sue President Obama for taking a vacation? Don't be laughing here. As and it, Martha's this, this is being for real. No, this, this is, is real. real. This is a real, real thing, honey. <laughs> We right. need your brains. You're an economist. Like, tell us what you think. No, there's no reason for us to sue President Obama for taking a vacation in Martha's Vineyard. He's perfectly free to do what he wants to okay. America. So there's one yes. We got that. <laughs> yes. That was yeah. that All was right, now we have that one sounded back here. like a nay. I'm not oh, sure. Wait one <laughs> second. I, I I want to talk to right. Zach, right? <laughs> I was watching you back over there. You're a pretty smart guy. <laughs> yeah. All right. So here we are. And Be an I want, economist. I just want you to tell me whether you think we should sue Mr. President. I no, think. but it's for, for going to Martha's Vineyard. I mean, that's a real crime. You know, like he's flying the jets. He's playing golf. 
I mean, he's drinking beer. He's drinking suds the whole time. I, I don't know. I, I'm thinking it's it's not I like legal. beer, so that's I don't check think it's one legal. for Mr. Obama. No, I don't think it's legal, but I, I don't know. Uh, I think Congress should spend its time passing a budget or fixing our immigration crisis or maybe the other ten things on their to-do list um, before they sue anybody. So that's a yes. That's so a that's another yes. All right, we got that. All right, we're good. We're doing really well today. All right. Are you ready back here? I, I'm not sure what the question is. <laughs> Please repeat the question. Yes, will you tell All me right. the question? I want to introduce Ron Livingstone. He happens to be a really good friend of ours, and he is part of CSI here. Uh, he is a member. He's crime Scene Investigation. He's been That's one us. of our DECAs for so long. Right? No, Crime Scene Investigation. Yeah, he's a Crime Scene Investigator. You said CSI. Here at well, it is. The Center for Social Innovation is also oh, crime that's scene CSI. In a okay. investigation. And Ron, will you tell us what you think about, um, do you think that President Obama, that Congress should sue President Obama for going to Martha's Vineyard, for taking a vacation in August? I'm just happy Congress is doing something. That's if definitely. If they're going to do something, if they could get that done, and then maybe next time we work on the economy, then next time we work on immigration, then next time we work on the Middle East, if we can get one thing done, baby, baby steps. steps. Exactly. Let's get one thing done and then keep the ball rolling. I think that's three yeses. I, I think that's three. Absolutely. We got almost yeah. un unanimous. We almost got an unanimous decision here. I think that's unanimous. I think it's unanimous. Oh, okay. All right. Well, wait. Before we get to Dax, because he's got the big brain, we want to get to, and he's an educator, you know, like, yes. so it's kind of cheating. But listen, it is we want to get our production people. Kenny, Kenny. Can you what tell you, us what you think? Well, what how do you, do you vote? Think, Yay or nay on Obama, that liberal guy in the White House? Should he be sued by Congress for going to Martha's Vineyard? You know, like that Yankee, those fancy Yankees up there, those elitist Yankees. That's right. Got, I mean, what do they do up there? I mean, well, wait a minute. We didn't okay. get that. You said, so you said everybody no. is entitled no. to a vacation. You think everybody's entitled okay. to a vacation? N -O when was the last time you went on vacation? Spell no. Okay. <laughs> All right, that is a no. Yeah, that is how you spell no. That's true. Yeah, I took, I that's took true. my spelling bees. No, that's good. Yeah. It's only two letters. I'm done. All I'm, right, Larissa. Larissa, I know you can't vote in the United States, but it doesn't stop half the illegal immigrants that come through the border. And that's a that, whole other story right. we don't even want to talk about. But, You're not but even Larissa, go there. Larissa, can you tell us? She's from Brazil. You okay, know, that's down there. Let that's me just say, south, oh, Larissa, border. you said yes, right? Okay, thank you. All right, appreciate that. All right. Well, now we got we got to do our own voting, but let's vote. Let's find out with Dax. He's gonna. He's, All um, right, Dax. You're closing us out here. Give us your magic vote. <laughs> well, wait. I don't have the official answer. I think the answer that both of you offer. Well, I will say this. First of all, no, you do not submit. But I will say for I will say for maybe a slightly different reason, only because the amount of time it would even take for this to move its move through the, like the legislative process, would by that time he'd be out of office. So I wouldn't even imagine if they were even to um, attempt to sue him, the discovery period would take two years. By that time, he's out of office, and it will, at that point doesn't really matter. And how much money would we spend actually doing through this process as well? So I would just second, third, and fourth, all the other, and fifth, all the other no's in the room. And I even assume that she would have said no if she would have been actually given a vote as well. Oh, well, she's I, a, she, she's been disadvantaged. I'm going to vote <laughs> on her behalf that um, he should not be. Sued. You're taking more than one vote, Max. You're taking more than one vote. I feel like all of our votes have been somehow co-opted because we, I have like six, 75 yeses from this room alone. And uh, only, hmm. Only this is just the facts. You know, we've been we've been entrusted with the federal government to count those Afghan votes. We've been we've right. been counting them for weeks. We're going to add them to this. We're the pile. subcontractor of the yeah, subcontractor. We, we found Al Gore's votes in Afghanistan. That's we're going right. to add them to the yeses here. We're going to add them. You're absolutely right because that's because you went to college, right? He went to college. Yeah. That man over there went to college. Well, thank you guys. I think it's pretty unanimous. I mean. Oh, we didn't vote. We didn't vote. What do you want to vote? Like, are you voting well, yay or nay? I, yay you know, or nay? I think that's a tough question these days because 
real I, easy. I feel like <laughs> if you make one decision, you've made both decisions. <laughs> Is that an abstention? I think he's abstentioning. What is it called, abstentioning? I think he's abstentioning. Yeah, I, I'm going to have to say that I think that, um, I think it's okay to take in a vacation if you're going fly fishing and if you're going to squirrel hunting. But I don't think going to Martha's Vineyard with all them liberal, liberal Yankees is legal. I, I just don't think it's legal. And I am. No, you, you you can cannot fly, fly fish. fish I don't know. know. I'm not oh well, if you can fly. Oh, if he's if up you there can... fly fishing right now. All right, then I'm. Then we drop the lawsuit. Then that's... I'm I'm with the nose. Then I'm that, with the nose. If you can fly fish. That's a good point, fish, actually. That's it. Or, good or point. he's driving go karts. So thank you very much, everybody. Thank you. We'll we have really you. Love you to death. Keep and on laughing. We'll fishing. News, only the best and only the facts with facts news today. Hey, facts news that rhymes with that. That's right. All right, everyone, thank you so much. Have an awesome afternoon, and we Bye. are That Matters Live. Come Ciao. see us next week. Bye. Fist bumps for everyone. All right. Coming around. Fist bumps.